G'day. Members of my online movement course, Locomotion Flow, get access to a weekly live movement class, just like the one you're about to see. In addition to the dozens of skills they learn in that course and how to create amazing skills and flows. So a link to the course is below. Enjoy today's video. Hello. Hello, everybody, <clears throat> wherever you are in the world. Here on the Sunshine Coast overnight, it has flooded. We've had super amounts of rain. The pool is overflowing and my indoor studio <laughs> has been flooded. So I have a bit of a cleanup operation to do in here today. The water has come in under the wall and filled the studio. So it stopped raining just for a moment. I actually got stuck in my hometown. I live in the country and I taught a class this morning, but unfortunately um, the road was all flooded. So I did find a back way to get to class. So it's been a long morning of driving. Um, I have my spot here, the green circle, uh, where if you've been working your way through the locomotion flow course, a lot of my material is shot here. So the forest is glistening, as you can see back there, subtropical rainforest. I've got some banana trees just down in there. There's a swamp or a billabong is a better name for it. But today, hopefully it stops raining, stays not raining for us. I will put you down on the ground and we can have a look at a couple of concepts I wanted to work through today. So let's get you down there. <clears throat> the first concept I wanted to look at is a nice way to warm up the wrists and the low squat. You can do it with a partner with a point to a spot. And to start off, I would reach to that spot. If you're on your own, you just choose a spot to reach to, place the hand and extend as high as we can and change hands. We can go behind us. This is a nice way to warm up the wrists and the rest of the body as well as emphasizing that nice, slow, controlled placement of the hands and just general body awareness, like this. So you'll notice I'm keeping both feet on the ground for this drill. To make this slightly harder, we can move to a cross lateral pattern, which means if I place my right hand on the ground, I take my right foot away, leaving my left foot. So I have this diagonal cross lateral stability of the side. So cross lateral, right hand, left foot, extend as far as I can. like so. That's a, a cross lateral pattern. When we do our lizard crawls, we're using that cross lateral support structure. From there, we can make it even harder. Most people find the same side harder again. So uh, it's been called ipsy lateral, where if I place my right hand, I keep the same side on the ground, remove my left foot, Right hand, right foot, and down. Left hand, left foot, and down. And go behind. This is ipsy lateral. So most people find it harder to balance the same side instead of that cross lateral. There's more stability on offer usually then the ipsy lateral. But some of the different skills and patterns we work with, 
in the locomotion flow course, use a combination of each. So it's just good to be aware of those concepts. So that's really great to incorporate into a warm up. You can take that to the next level by adding in a press, depending on your strength levels. So if I were to be working the cross lateral pattern, I can press down and then return. Behind, it might look more like this. And this is an example of how you can add another layer of complexity and challenge into this warm up drill. Once again. Like so. So, they're just some warm up concepts I thought I would share with you. I often use these in class, particularly with partners where you can get a partner to point to a spot and that's where you have to aim. It's a great way to work with a partner and get warmed up. It's a bit more interesting than just doing your wrist exercises or your squat exercises and it really works both those components as well as warms up the rest of the body. Today I wanted to look at a couple of things that aren't in the course but will be added later. Here comes the rain. Ha! So I wanted to look at, I've been calling it the bottle cap. From low squat, place the hands down. This is a straight arm exercise and I'm just going to do a half turn with my legs around my hands. So the hands don't move, but I make the feet light so that I can spin around my own hands. From the side, hands go down. Like so. I've been calling this the bottle cap. So just checking, I thought I had a comment there. It wasn't, it was somebody messaging me again. This seems to happen. Apologies for my distraction. But what I wanted to introduce you to is this concept of blending skills where there's permutations of every skill and you can actually blend them together. So one of the skills in the course is the Cossack insertion, which looks like this. So that's one of the fundamental skills in the course. Other way. What we're going to do today is we're going to blend half of that Cossack insertion with the bottle cap I, I just introduced you to. So it will look like this. Cossack. Transition. Hands go down into our bottle cap. Cossack. Hands go down into our bottle cap. Here comes the rain. <laughs> so we'll do it really slowly. I'll do it in reverse behind you so you can follow along with me if you're at home. From our low squat, we reach forward, point, Pop, turn, hands go down inside the legs, model cap spin. We're going to go that way, reach, point, pop, spin, hands go down on the inside of the legs, model cap spin out. So that's a nice little mutation of the Cossack insertion and the bottle cap, which I haven't uploaded to the course yet, but I will very soon, um, just gives you another little playful option to combine those rather than just doing the uh, Cossack insertion ending in that press maneuver. Um, the great thing about the Cossack insertion 
is it's a good one if you do have a pressed in handstand or you're working on that, it's something to aim for. And that's why I really love that one. But the bottle cap offers something a little easier. So you can turn some corners, add those into your sequences and flows. The other thing this week that I've been experimenting with, and uh, I shared a piece on Instagram if you're following me there, was this idea of a pike hop. So it looks like this from the low squat position. I reach over as though I'm doing my roll A and then I pike over to the other side. <laughs> like so. The other way would look like this. <laughs> so, what you'll notice is I start facing one way. I start from my cartwheel hand position so that I face the other way. Pike up, finish in low squat, facing the opposite direction than I started in. So this one doesn't look like much, but if you've been working on any sort of press to handstand mechanics, or if that's something that interests you, you can really slow it down and try to hover and glide to make it more pressy for better effect. Obviously the slower, smoother, more controlled it is, and the straighter you get those legs, the more stylish it becomes, and the silkier it gets, and the smoother it all feels, gives it that beautiful aesthetic that we're looking for. Okay, so we've practiced the bottle cap. We've created a combination or a mutation between the Cossack insertion into the bottle cap. Now let's try and add the pike hop at the front of those two skills so that we have a little piece to play with today, a three-piece feed, <laughs> a three-piece combination. So it'll be the pike hop into the Cossack insertion into the bottle cap. So it'll look like this. And that will be one sequence. If I was go, to go back the other way, like so, different angle for you. and I'm off camera. Another one, try to stay on camera this time. Like so. I'll do one from behind. Like so. That should start giving you the idea of how to join these three things together and possibly some insight into how you can start to pick and choose skills from the course, get creative and create your own integrations. So when we practice things in a set sequence, uh, like I just gave you, the pike hop, the Cossack insertion and the bottle cap. And I ask you to do it in that set order. That is a closed chain system. So we could 
mix things up, make it open so that you could do any of those skills in any order, make it open. Uh, and then of course, it's really important, I think, when you're learning locomotion to divide your practice up into isolation, work on each singular skill, then integration, learn how to combine them like we've just done. And then finally, put the timer on at the end of your session and do some improvisation where you just see what comes out. So I put some music on, I put the timer on, and I'm just gonna start to flow and see what happens. Like that, and just keep it going. The only rule is don't stop moving. Tremendous value in that because there was no premeditation in what I just did. I allowed my body to choose. So it takes away the thinking mind, starts to bring through some intuition and allowing the body to move naturally with the skills and vocabulary that you've been rehearsing and practiced. This is terrific for creating new neuro pathways and allowing the mind to just ex expand the brain gets a good workout as well as the body. So that is pretty much it for today. Thankfully the rain stayed away. We're getting a little bit of blue sky up here. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. It's starting to clear up. Another wet soggy day here on the Sunshine Coast. I think it was raining last week when I did a class for you all as well. If you have any questions, Drop a comment down below, shoot me an email, let me know how you're going, send me some clips, share it in this group. Uh, that'd be great to see some progress. I get people sending me stuff privately, but we're all in this together. We're all trying to learn and grow together, including myself. So if you get a chance, drop some stuff in there and uh, I will always give you feedback and help as much as I possibly can and it's also cool to connect with other movers wherever you are in the world. Okay, that is it for today. Class is out. So I will see you next week.